Hey everyone, welcome back to Pete's Classic Cycle. Pete here, and today I've got some more Kawasaki history to share with all of you guys. So if you want to see what's in here, stay tuned and let the good times roll. So what we have here is part of a press package that was given to Cycle Canada from Kawasaki. So starting off here, we've got this beautiful write-up from Kawasaki, kind of going over the Z1 and what makes it such a revolutionary motorcycle, what makes this bike unique, how it's pushed the technology of the motorcycle, and why it is really on top of the game. So like here, the, you can see the Kawasaki Z1 marks the point where the motorcycles have come of age. So they know that this bike is, is ahead of its time. And, and going through the description, you can really tell they put a lot of effort to put the rider first uh, with how easy it is to service the motorcycle, uh, comfort, performance. Um, they really, really, really put a lot of effort to make the Z1 the best that it can be to be a benchmark for all other brands to catch up to. And a little bit of funny foreshadowing here, where it says the engine provides all the turbine-like smooth performance. Well, Noah Kawasaki always pushing the boundaries of performance. The new Kawasaki H2 that obviously uses a supercharger developed by Kawasaki's jet turbine um, division. Almost 50 years later, that kind of foreshadowing has actually come into reality using a turbine-like performance. If you go down to the bottom, where they mention for further information, um, contact the Outdoor World of Manly's. If that name sounds familiar, it's because not only was, was Manly's the Canadian importer for Kawasaki, but they also ran the factory race teams featuring none other than world-renowned road racer Yvonne Duhamel. Cool history there, and to have that in the lit literature for me is just, I don't know, just a cool little cherry on top in my opinion. Now moving on, we've got these beautiful, crystal clear, glossy images of the 73Z1. Now from talking to John Cooper, who is the owner and editor of Cycle Canada, he explained to me that Kawasaki never actually provided negatives. Instead, they only provided these glossy images that they would then have to kind of photograph and blow up and, and manipulate in their own photo labs. So these glossy images here that I'm about to show you are the actual original copies from Kawasaki that then would have been duplicated by the various magazines. Now, granted, John also mentioned that, of course, being a, a publication, you want to use your own photographs. So if, if they had their hands on a demo bike, etc., they would obviously prefer to photograph that with their own riders and their own scenery as opposed to using these. Another cool thing for the Z1 enthusiasts out there, you'll notice that this is a 72 Z1. So one of the, the early productions that was made in 72 for the release in 73. A couple small details you can tell by, by the fork embossing there. Um, and moving on, you can also tell uh, there's no webbing in the carburetor. So this is the next photograph. Of course, a nice beautiful side shot. Another clear, glossy, high-def picture. Moving on, we've got this really cool cutaway image of the Z1 motor. Now, what I find kind of interesting with this is, of course, the 73 Z1 had the black cylinders, black heads, black engine cases, where this one is all bare aluminum. But the carburetors, again, are early Z1 carbs without the webbing or anything. Uh, if anybody has any more information on this or why or, or perhaps I'm completely wrong, please leave it in the comments below. I would love to know more information about this motor. From there, moving on, beautiful action shot. If you recall from my 72 Kawasaki press pack release video, um, Kawasaki uses a lot of really nice action shots to kind of show the performance of these bikes and that still applies to the 73 Z1, and on the back, you can see a glue mark where the letter was glued to the, uh, the back of this photograph. Now, of course, this is nothing new for any uh, Z1 collector. This is the original sales brochure, included in here. Now, I cannot confirm whether or not this brochure was part of the package, but it, it came with, with everything that I've got here. It's in, and it really wouldn't surprise me if Kawasaki included this with the images and stuff to provide extra information. And last but not least, we have this beautiful poster for Kawasaki Z1 cam chain timing. 
Now, no disrespect to Kawasaki, but I do find it a little funny how they actually had a poster to hang on your wall for the can chain timing, as, as if you'd have to do it so often. Now, not only am I a big fan of Kawasaki's, the Z1, and the brand's history, one thing I find so fascinating is that it was this letter, this sales brochure, these images that kicked off the whole Z1 craze up here in Canada. So to have this history in my hands for such an iconic motorcycle is it's absolutely mind blowing. And if you know my history at all, my dad, against his parents' will, hitchhiked to the Kawasaki dealership in 1973 and rode home on a brand new Z1. Prior to doing so, he did a whole bunch of research on the bike. Well, he was a lifelong subscriber to Cycle Canada. So all of my dad's research would have come from this stuff here. I mean, uh, for everything to kind of come full circle and now to be restoring his Z1, have these documents to go along with the bike. Um, you know, it's, it's these letters that got my dad into the Z1, got me into the Z1, me into Kawasaki. And now all of you are watching this video. It's, it's actually pretty amazing how this was able to impact everything. So again, I'm nerding out here. I'm sorry, I'm kind of blabbing on, but it's just really fascinating. On a personal level, it's, it's truly amazing. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I had tons of fun sharing it with all of you guys. If any of you have more cool Kawasaki history like this and you want to share it, please reach out, leave your comments below. And as always guys, please ride safe. Thank you.